Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we're talking about one of the most adaptable techniques in all of bass fishing. It can catch them on any day in any place. That is the tube. My earliest bass fishing memories are throwing tubes. My dad and my brother loved to throw gitsits. And when we would go bass fishing, that is what we did. That is all we did for a long time. We fished with tubes because no matter where we went, no matter what the fish were doing, they worked. And they continue to work today. In fact, I was just talking to my dad and brother about this the other day. We were talking about how a lot of us just don't throw a tube throughout the year, but every time you pick it up, lo and behold, it works. It is just one of those techniques that works in almost every situation. So if a tube is not in your fishing arsenal today, you need to add it. They're cheap, they're really basic, you can throw it on a lot of different gear. Now today we're going to get into some of the technical aspects, some different baits for different situations, different hooks, some different gear for each style. But just generally speaking, going out and throwing a tube towards shore and pulling it out, you can do that on just about any rod and you can catch bass. So the deal with the tube, they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. But essentially they're hollow baits and then the tails have been all split up. They imitate, in my opinion, the bulk of tubes are imitating a crawdad. They could also be imitating panfish or about 10,000 other things on the bottom of the lake. But every single one of those things is some version of bass food because bass will flat out mow down a tube. They will catch largemouth, they'll catch big largemouth. But where they really, really shine is big smallmouth and big spotted bass. It's incredible. The true, I mean the giant giants, will eat a tube almost unlike anything else. They love to eat a tube and it is one of my favorite ways to target them. So tubes, you can basically break them up into three or four categories, okay? You've got tournament style tubes, which are going to be these long, skinny guys, typically in a three and a half inch tube. And then we've got what we would call a, a full bodied tube, okay? So thicker, similar length, three and a half, three and three quarter, maybe even four inch, but just a little bit thicker bodied tube. Then we've got what we call double dips, which is where it's literally the way they make a tube is they dip it into material. So they dip it twice to make it thicker. And then we've got these little finesse tubes, you know, like that little STH or nowadays it's gone all the way to the extreme. There are little Ned tubes for Ned rigging. So you've got all these different options. What are they for? How do you know how to choose between them? You know, I could draw some generalizations for you that will make this easier. Ge generally speaking, Highland reservoirs, clear water reservoirs, they mow down those thinner tournament tubes. But it's not just there, like Clear Lake out in California, I crushed them on a tournament tube. I guided out there for years, most of you know that. And when I was guiding out there, if I just needed a client to get a bite, the conditions weren't working, we had bad weather, something was wrong and the fish were in a funk, I could take a three and a half inch tournament tube, green pumpkin black flake, put it on this head right here with a bit of an O'Shaughnessy style bend to it, we'd crush them. It never failed, never failed. It always worked. When I go up north, you know where there's gobies, but even where there's not gobies, I don't know why. When I go north, I tend to do better with the fatter tubes, the little two and a half inch tubes or the three, even four inch tubes, but the thicker, more full bodied or double dipped tubes. 
And then obviously a Ned rig just speaks for itself, right? Like anytime you've got a little bit of a, you've got bad conditions, you've got ultra clear water, you've got fish that are a little funky, a Ned rig just works. And a little Ned tube, fish just like a Ned rig, will crush them. Um, now we've also got flipping tubes and I didn't even bring a flipping tube today. Uh, but that's its own animal. And I want to explain what each one of these categories are for because I really do believe that if you don't have tubes, they're also called tube jigs. If you don't have tubes in your arsenal, you are making a mistake because it is one of those panic button baits that you can turn to much like a Senko or a shaky head or a drop shot or a Ned rig. It's a bait that will get you bit when you need to get bit. But they're, like I said, there are some times where it really, really shines for giants, and I'm about to get into that. But let's talk briefly about a flipping tube. So a flipping tube would be taking a, a full-size tube, and instead of rigging it on an exposed head, you would Texas rig it. So, you know, tungsten weight on the line, and then a wide gap hook or a flipping hook rigged into that bait. And you flip it. Flip just like it's a jig, or a great big creature bait in heavy cover, you know, fishing in Florida, fishing laydowns, fishing grass, anywhere where you're punching, you can punch with a tube for a completely different profile that fish generally don't see. That big bite, uh, that big flipping tube is my favorite of all the tubes for flipping. I've done really well with that tube. Now that's that's that category. And I'll link all these baits, hooks, weights, all my favorite colors, the specific gear, all that in the video description. So don't get overwhelmed. Stick with me. It'll all be there and it will all be organized for you. Uh, but that's flipping tubes. Now, generally, if you just want to grab a tube and try it out, I started to say in reservoir situations, that tournament tube. If you take a tournament tube, fish it on a traditional tube head like this 30 degree bite me right here just slide that up i slide it all the way to the top and then i pop the eyelet through okay and then i might need to rip the tube just a little bit so that that hook sits straight there we go that is a fully rigged tournament tube right there you add that to your arsenal in a green pumpkin. This is a green pumpkin with purple and copper flake in it. Uh, but green pumpkin as a base color, it will catch fish, period. That is a great thing to add into your arsenal. Put it right next to your Senko. I mean, when you want to go out there and just catch fish, try it. Now they have an exposed hook. Plus side of that, if you get bit, you're putting a hook in them. Downside of that, is you're dragging it along the bottom, they do get snagged up. The nice thing is they're cheap. They really are cheap. A pack of hooks, pack of baits, no big deal. You can afford to go through some tubes. It's not like breaking off hard baits, but you will lose some. And I really do, with the exception of flipping, I fish them on exposed heads because I don't want to miss these bites. Now the full size tubes, three full size tubes that I throw a lot. And I throw these here on Chickamauga. I throw these in the Great Lakes and I throw them everywhere in between. You see Tim throwing them a lot. Tim likes to throw them on a heavy head, like a, a fat goby type head. Again, I'll link them in the description, but Tim loves to take either that STH four inch or that big bite and he'll rig these on three eighths to a half ounce. You put that fat head in there, pop it out. See how it kind of creates a ball on the end? Tim excels fishing these on heavy heads. He's better at it than I am. But what he likes to do is a lot of times when the water's cold and fish are deep, he'll put that heavy head, either a three eighths or a half, and you can fish it on heavier gear and you pop that rod. It's called stroking a jig. It's a double pop, reel up, pop, pop, and it'll jump up off the bottom and drift. And the tubes do have a drift to them. Some of them, you need to play with the heads if you ever get a chance in clear water and you've got a few different tube heads. 
rig them all up, pitch them out in the water on a slack line and just watch what they do. Just watch them go to bottom. Because some of them will kind of swim like this. They'll kind of S their way down. Some of them will do what we call a death spiral. And a death spiral, well, it's deadly. They just do this all the way to the bottom. It works wonders around docks. You throw one up that'll swim in a circle, pitch it up under a dock, and then just slack line it and just let it do its thing. And the second it hits the bottom, you see your line lay, lay flat when it hits bottom and then dunk, they pick it off. They see it going down, they follow it down. And as soon as it lands, they eat it. Works really well. But play with the different heads because each head will behave a little bit differently. But those bigger heads, you snap that bait up and then just let it wander and it'll just sort of drift back to bottom. And it's amazing the fish that he will catch on that tube at the same time that I'm usually throwing a football jig. We fish him as kind of a one-two punch uh, and it works really well. So those big fat goby style heads. Now, when I go up north, I like to fish these on smaller stout hooks, really light line and target jumbo smallies with them. I do it with the full profiles. I also do it with the tiny ones. And the tiny ones, I mean, that's my baby. And I'm, I'm gonna give you the fine details of it today. But the bigger ones, four inch tubes, so that's an STH right there. That's the Savage Gear Gobi tube. See how it's actually got, you can't really see it out here in the light, but it's got an actual face molded on it. It's got full fins on it. It really does look like a Gobi. I do so well on these tubes. So when I'm fishing, I mean, how big of a generalization can I use? The southern half of the country. A focus on the green pumpkins. When I get way up north, I focus on the sandy. I don't know how else to describe it. The sandy type colors. Juvenile goby, just those really light colors. I just. I don't think very many people throw them. I think people focus on a lot of these traditional, they're gonna throw green pumpkin, they're gonna throw dark melon. Those are extremely common tube colors for a reason. Both of those should be in your lineup if you go up north or south, literally anywhere. Again, tubes are cheap. Don't be afraid to buy a few different colors. But if you're going north and you're not throwing sand colored tubes, lighter colored tubes, you're blowing it. So when I'm up there, whether I'm fishing a full size tube, here's a head I've been playing with. This is a freedom tackle head. It's got a flat side. I've been trying to get my tubes to sit upright because then you just have that much more hook exposure. So check this one out. I'll put this one in here. Oop, popped it through a little too early. Slide it on in there. Put that one in there and that tube, it will, it'll sit flat. Well, not on my hand, but on the bottom. And then this is my baby. And some of you know this, this is the STH 2.5 inch tube. This is a head that was never, ever meant to be in a tube, but is the baddest tube hook that I have ever come across. Uh, it's amazing. So this is a Blade Runner inhaler head, but it's a tiny little hook. The smallest hook is the one you want. Eighth ounce, three sixteenths, the smallest little hook. That little guy rigged in this two and a half inch tube, just like so, crushes giant smallmouth. I mean, crushes them. So there's different ways to fish a tube. We've talked about fishing out deep, snapping them. You can also just drag them. Tournament tubes, I typically just drag them. You kind of shake them along the bottom, pull them, let them sit, shake them, pull them, let them sit. When I'm up north, I love to sight fish with them. Now I'm not talking bed fish. That is not what I'm talking about. I mean, they'd probably work fine for bed fishing, but that's not what I mean by sight fishing. What I mean, excuse me, what I mean is I'm up there fishing clear water and I can see the fish. Pre-spawn fish, post-spawn fish, 
not bad fish. The water's so clear, you can literally see them just about everywhere you go in the Great Lakes or a lot of inland lakes. And when I see those fish, I like to lead them with a the tube. So say I look towards the shore and I see a fish cruising up here. If she's going this way, I throw 20 or 30 feet ahead of her with that tube, the little tube. Let that guy go down, hit the bottom, and I just leave it there. And typically those fish are just cruising. You just watch them go. When it gets about 10 or 15 feet from the bait, again, the water's clear. I take my rod tip and I just go pop. And that bait just jumps up off the bottom. And it's just enough that they will see it. They come straight to it. They beeline to it. And then when they get right there, I do nothing. I just wait. A lot of times when you do that, they come and they look at it. And they just sit there and look at that sandy tube on the bottom and just boom, they hit that thing. But if they don't hit it, right when they start to lose interest, I give it one more just subtle little bump and they just boom, they smash it. It works. I mean, I hardly even drop shot when I fish that big water now. When I go up north, I hardly even throw a drop shot because the tube is so deadly. There's less people doing it. It's not a secret. It's literally a forgotten bait. We all know about it. We all grew up throwing them, or at least most of us did. But a lot of guys got away from it. You've got to add it back into the arsenal. It's really fun. Now I throw them on light lines. So this little guy, the key here, the 2.5, I'm just, just trust my judgment on this is the deal and that tiny little hook is the deal this one because it's heavy wire even though it's small that inhaler head is heavy wire i will never ever bend that out on a big small mouth or a big spot or a big large mouth i just won't it's small but it's stout and that is the key now i'm always playing with other heads so like this little guy is the same size hook but lighter wire. So if you've got truly clear water, that little tiny guy, it's that same, it's the same one I have in there, just downsized. It's that little freedom tackle. But if you want a lighter hook, we finally have an option. There haven't been a lot of small hook options for these little tubes, but that one has shown up as a good option too that I've been playing with and I will play more with this year. Uh, but these tubes, you just need to do it. Now, as far as gear goes, general tube fishing, going down the bank in your reservoir trying to catch fish, any spinning rod, medium, medium action, seven footer, it's gonna be great. You're good to go. If you get technical, if you start chasing giant smallmouth or giant spotted bass like I'm talking about, you wanna get really specific with your gear. So I'm using, this is a Loomis NRX 872. Uh, so seven foot three to seven foot six medium. That's the deal. I've got two or three very specific rods that I use. The reason why is that you've got to have enough rod that you can make those bomber clear water casts. Now I'm speaking to you Northern guys right now. The rod matters. You've got to be able to make the bomber cast. Then when they eat it on the bomber cast, because you never heard me say that when I led that fish, I worked to that bait, right? I made as far of a cast ahead of that fish as I needed to make, and then I never moved it. So when I stick that fish, she's at the end of the cast. And that matters because these are big fish. I'm choosing the fish I wanna cast to. I'm throwing to the big ones. And I'm leading them and I'm hooking them on a long cast. So I run braid to leader and my leader is typically seven pound fluoro. Uh, I can get away with that, especially on the 2.5. If I'm throwing the full size tubes, like the Savage or like the four inch STH or the Big Bite, then I usually go up to eight pound. I mean, it's such a minute difference, but it matters. You guys know it matters. But at seven, I seem to be able to get all the bites I wanna get on seven tied to 10 to 15 pound braid. 
So a 7.3 to 7.6 rod will give me the distance. It'll also give me the hook set power. That's why I'm using that medium action so I can stick them. And then once I stick them, that longer rod will bow up and it does a really good job of keeping them pinned because it's a fair bit of weight and none of these baits have a weed guard to help hook that, to, to help hold that hook into place. You've got to fight them and keep it in place. So that longer rod that really loads up makes a huge, huge difference. And then I tend to use higher end reels for this as well. This is one of those techniques where I, I personally really like to use high end gear. So I use the twin power a lot. Tim prefers the X sense, both amazing reels, incredible casting distance. Uh, and I can really be accurate and lead those fish and get them to bite. But Again, in the description, I'll link you my favorite combos. I'll also link you a great budget option for the guy who just wants to throw a tube. And then again, the little Ned tubes, it's just a little side note, but when you're throwing a Ned rig, if everybody's throwing a Ned rig and you wanna try something different, throw a little Ned tube on there. Rigs up just like any other Ned, and you basically just dead stick it. Just hardly even work that little guy. Just a deadly little tiny Ned profile, little tube, and they eat it up. So again, I'm gonna link all the gear in the video description for you. It's one of my favorite ways to catch giant smallies. It's one of my most reliable ways to catch largemouth when I need to, just to catch good quality fish. It works so well. Hopefully you guys can take advantage of that this year. You can throw it spring, summer, fall, winter. I mean, any time of year, they'll pick off a tube. It's just one of those baits that should be in the lineup and a lot of people overlook it. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.